Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician the Civil War. This is our Confederate campaign. If you have not seen the campaign up to this point, there is a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning. Uh, we just sent our ocean going fleet, small as it is, to take on the Naval Blockading Squadron of the United States out here, uh, which has 10 ships and 109 guns. Uh, did not go particularly well, I don't think, um, but let's take a look. Battle of Charleston has ended with Anderson's squadron retreating. That's ours. Uh, we only had two actual fighting vessels, but 132 guns. Well, three ships. 132 guns. Um, with us being thoroughly outgunned and outmaneuvered by a superior enemy. We had more guns, but not as many ships. And I think that probably made the difference in this case. And no sooner did that naval battle happen than our Western Army is running into the Army of Indiana. Uh, so we're going to have ourselves another fight out here in southwest Missouri near Springfield where we have fought before but it seems like he really wants to push things. So let's see what we can do. All right we are on the defensive and uh, we're fighting on the Wilson's Creek battlefield again. The objectives are here and here uh, which means it's quite possible he could come down this road and go for that one directly which means we'd be all out of whack. Uh, but it's also quite possible he comes down this road and comes at us over here. So I think what I need to do here is I need to send the Rangers volunteers mounted up over to cover this extreme flank over here in case that's where he comes. Okay, it's uh, late into the afternoon, but we're finally getting our first sight of the enemy. He is coming down right here in the center. I had just crossed over one of my divisions and they're, uh, that's Hood's division. They're getting up into place over here. So uh, we have this one crossing here that we don't have anybody at. So I guess we better deal with that pretty quickly. McIntosh is sitting in kind of a weird spot because he's behind this fence. So we're going to have to march him out. It looks like they're not going to come down that road there. But we may be in a position where we can move this division here up and across and intercept them once they commit somewhere here. So let's wait and see where he commits before we worry about that. Okay. So I switched these out. I actually had the Arkansas State Guard there, but I want the Willamette Guard to be the ones guarding this crossing. Uh, we see some artillery coming down this way and it looks like now he's backing up so he's just got the one brigade here I'm almost tempted to cross and try to hit him but at the very least we'll start getting our artillery to fire on them and then I think we're gonna go ahead and start bringing bringing hood up at least get him in position up here somewhere on these hills before nightfall and then we'll be in a better position to re redeploy for the next day's fight. You know what? I think this might be an opportunity here. Let's send Samuel Cooper up to go deal with this artillery. He's got 2,400 men, the Yuma Mounted Raiders. Hopefully we can hit them before they get too much fire into me. Oh, he's going to pull back. It's Phil Kearney, it looks like. As for the rest, they don't seem to be doing a whole lot at the moment. I don't think we're going to have any action on the first day. This is 10 times speed, and you can see how slowly we're moving. It must be uphill. Ah, there's the end of the day. All right, those guns are going to probably be long gone now when he redeploys. All right, where do we want to put these guys? I like the idea of up on this hill. Though I'm not real thrilled with where those guns are, so I'm going to have to figure something out here. That's my cab that was way out here. It looks like they've come back over here now. And it's not going to let me have Macintosh on that side. That kind of stinks.
Okay. So now we need to redeploy Macintosh right there. Those guns are still there, but he's got support behind it, so we've got to hit him quick. Come on, hit him. I'm going to wipe out that battery as quick as we can. All right, Cooper. Please don't break. I said, please don't break. You broke. Ugh. 28 losses. I mean, they didn't lose a man in the charge. Darn it. All right, that didn't work out so well. We're still waiting on the Yuma Mounted... Oh, that was McCulloch's Brigade here. We're still waiting on them to make their move. Our division, division commander is way over there, so we've got to move him. And it looks like the Union's going to get there before we do. Oh, that sucks. That's the one thing I don't like about the way these uh, redeployments take place. But here, we'll just go ahead and line up behind this fence instead. Maybe. Come on, Macintosh, get behind the fence. Get behind the fence. Oh, this is frustrating. We got a feud here, so the commander's gonna do what he wants, which in this case means be stupid. Now, the Yuma Mountain Raiders have somewhat recovered. And these guns are moving, so maybe there's a chance here to hit them again. Stoneman's about to come up here. Willamette Guard are going to have their chance on them. This is basically going to be a couple of one on one actions. Oh, for goodness sake, would you move up? The unit shouldn't be cut off. Let's move the division commander over here. Up here. All right, we're gonna bring the Arkansas State Guard across. We're still trying to chase down these guns. Ah, now we're gonna get close to the infantry. That's not gonna work. All right, call it off. Halt. You got a whole division moving in on me over here. I'm gonna have to shift hood to deal with that. How's the Willamette Guard doing? They've lost 111 men. They're pretty confident though. They've inflicted more casualties than they've taken so far. I don't think we can get the Rangers volunteers in range. Cooper's all the way up there. Stop! That was my fault. I sent him chasing after that artillery and it got him in trouble. All right, turn around and charge into Mansfield. At least do something helpful. I'm going to send Pierce up to help them. All right, at least get long range so you guys can start firing. Willamette Guard, their opponents have backed off. I'm going to pursue. Man, 
man, this has been a frustrating battle so far. Just in terms of not being able to get my my men to do what I want them to. McCulloch's brigade still has not even engaged the enemy. All the casualties we're inflicting are being caused by cab by uh, artillery. There we go. At least they might start firing now. Right as the Union's retreating. Oh, for goodness sake, would you put a volley or two into them? Now we're going to have to replace Macintosh. Alright, Willamette Guard's crossing. What a complete waste of manpower that was, McCulloch. McCulloch's Brigade. Meanwhile, what's going on over here? Santa Fe or regulars are going to get into the action. So are the Tucson Rangers. Let's see how they do. This is going to be interesting. These are two of my more experienced brigades. Bonham's already got a perk. And D.H. Hill's about to get one. So D.H. Hill, historically, he and Stonewall Jackson were married to sisters in the same family. Oh boy, this might get ugly here. I'm going to move Hill up. I need Pierce to get into position quickly. And here comes another division down right here. Now we got the Willamette Guard with a, f a feud problem. So maybe maybe our issue is with our division commander, Pond. It seems like nobody likes him. Nobody wants to serve under him. Go ahead and speed things up a little bit here. Stop right where they are. All right, we broke one brigade. Right, he's gonna charge right into the Santa Fe regulars. Nice thing is here, we might have an opportunity if these guns can fire there. Oh, we broke them too. Well, Hood's division is doing their job, at least. Pond's division's quite another story. But we pretty much broke the Union right. Alright, let's bring Hood over here. Alright, we ran into another Union Brigade right there. Now we, we need to try and build a battle line here and I need to get Pond to bring his division up alongside of them. The situation right now is we're still estimating he's got 30,000 men but I don't think he's got nearly that many really. Morale's about the same on both sides. So this is far from a sure thing right now. All right, he just charged right into us. Boy, Hood's just got his hands full. He's been having to take on basically the whole army because Pond can't get his act together over here. But it looks like Hood just drove off yet another brigade. It's just a tangled mess over here right now. I just don't know how many of these brigades Hood's going to be able to take on on his own.
Yeah, see, things are starting to, to look not so good here. Hood's demoralized. I was afraid of that. They're just trying to do too much on their own. Come on, Pond. Get your act together and help us out. Yeah, there he goes. I was afraid we'd probably lose one of Hood's brigades at some point. And D.H. Hill's going to be not far behind because, number one, he's getting fired into his flank. Two of the other brigades have already broken. I feel like this is just a bad situation all around. I mean, we're doing decent as far as inflicting casualties go. It's just not a good situation. Everybody halt. Halt, halt, halt. It'd be really nice if these Arkansas State troops would get their act together and help out too. Pond's finally got some men coming up. You gotta remember to definitely replace Pond at the end of this battle, regardless of what happens. And once again, he's gonna charge right into us. Here comes Bowen this time. He's sending two brigades at me. Arkansas. Ah, we broke. All right, it's time to to pull out of this one, unfortunately. Which is unfortunate because that's gonna leave. Missouri and Union hands, at least for the time being. Let's see what the final numbers are going to look like with this retreat. It's going to it's going to give us a hit on casualties. I think that was a leadership issue from start to finish on that one. Wow, we ended up with 3,500 casualties because of that retreat. We were doing really well before that. Oh, that hurt. All right, let's take a look at the Western Army now. Uh, Pawns got to go absolutely got to go uh, he's a politically assigned general anyway uh, who do we have available to us out there Benjamin McCulloch's not bad we could promote DH Hill actually that'd be a really good choice uh, so we're gonna promote DH Hill to um, division command hood is obviously a good choice he's a great general uh, let's take a look at our brigade commanders here. I also want to look at the situation with the weaponry. The El Paso Heavy Artillery, we'd like to have something heavier <laughs> for them. Um, how about some 24-pounder howitzers? That's a nice change from the 6-pounders they've currently got. I'd also like to upgrade some of these weapons. Reboard muskets is even an upgrade from what they currently have. All right, Edmund Kirby Smith is going to have to fall back for now. Where's our other Western Army? It's the Missouri State Guard. Oh, they're the ones that retreated all the way to Mobile, Alabama. They're making their way back up to Memphis, Tennessee. Over here in West Virginia, the Army of the Appalachians is still um, working on their supply base. It's going to be another three weeks before we upgrade this supply depot to level two. In the meantime, we're going to build a second one because we do not have enough supplies, uh, even for that army of 12,000 men. But we have to hold on to Charleston because uh, that will keep West Virginia from seceding uh, from the Confederacy. We've got an army of Tennessee. Uh, somewhere in Ohio with 30,000 men, so that's obviously a concern. He's up to 193,000 men to our 153 uh, But we are so short on the ability to recruit right now. We could recruit from Alabama, Arkansas, looks like Missouri and Mississippi and Maryland. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on some additional units. Some more of those patron uh, brigades where I can. Just want to give everybody a heads up in case they want to uh, change their request a little bit. Uh, we have a ton of patron units that have been requested from the state of Virginia. Uh, 
it's fine if you want to keep your request from Virginia. It just might mean it takes a while to get your unit into the game. We don't have any available Virginia troops right now. Uh, we've got 18 men available as recruits from Virginia. Uh, so until we get more Virginia troops, I have to skip over those requests and go on to other ones that have states that are available or that don't have a preference on state. So um, I'm trying to take these in order of when the requests came in, but right now, nothing available in Virginia. Just want to give you that heads up. All right, looking at our Western Army as I just recruited uh, the 42nd Black Watch of Texas to go in that force. Uh, Ebony Kirby, Kirby Smith is defamed, so we've got an issue there with our Western Army. He's going to have to be replaced. Uh, so we're looking at some of the available options. Benjamin McCulloch's not a bad option. Uh, he's an aggressive leader. Not real famous, but he's an inspiring, uh, aggressive leader. So I think we could probably go with him. Um, otherwise, I'm just looking at our other leaders. I think we're in good shape. Hood, Hill, Theophilus Holmes uh, is going to be our newest division commander. Uh, so I think that'll help there. I did start recruiting a couple of those Virginia units. Uh, we're going to have... Uh, where are they? The Norfolk Admirals, 10 days away under James Kemper. Uh, and the Stanton Rifles, 7 days away. Uh, those are going to be in the Army of Northern Virginia. I actually transferred Jubal Early's division from the Army of Northern Virginia over to the Army of Shenandoah. So that gives uh, Johnston about 26,000 men to defend. Um, Union just passed the Confiscation Act. Uh, we've got to defend Winchester because we've got that Army of the Potomac sitting there. Oh, hey, hello. All right, so, wow, Lee's only got 11. Oh, that's because it's a lot of cavalry. I keep forgetting that. 11,000 infantry, 14,000 cav, 32 guns, 74,000 men. Army of Northeastern Virginia, Army of the Shenandoah, and the Department of Pennsylvania. That is not a feasible situation, unfortunately. Um, let's try to slip away. We're going to have to pull Johnston back. I just don't have a choice here. I didn't realize we were going to be facing that many men. So between the Army of Northern Virginia, the Army of the Shenandoah, and the Army of Virginia down here, we can scrape together what, about 7,000, 30,000? We can scrape together nearly 60,000 men to face them. All right, so now it looks like we're going to be facing off against one part of that army. We're going to have about 21,000 men in the Army of the Shenandoah going up against the Army of Northeastern Virginia. That's a much better situation. We'll see how that battle goes. Battle Front Royal Bridge, October 17th, 1861. Okay, so we've basically got a situation where either side could be um, able to gobble up some victory positions. Nobody holds any. So it's all about clashing somewhere in the center of town near Winchester. We're obviously slightly outnumbered, but not too bad. So let's go ahead and start moving up. Zollicoffer's division's only got one brigade in it. Uh, we've got Pickett with the Mighty Special Forces, Forces Division. We'll move them up right near the center for now. Early's Division, I'll bring right in right there for now. And then we're going to send Stewart's Cavalry out to scout ahead. Let's give them an evade order. And then we're going to send them into town see what we can see. All right, I think he's coming in from this bottom corner. So we're going to try to move on these objectives here and then maybe dig in along a line right here, if that's possible. Uh, so I've got this cavalry here now. Let's go ahead and go up and grab this objective. And then I'm going to go try to grab this objective over here on the other side. See if we can grab as much territory as possible before it's too late. All right, it's nearly nightfall, and we have our cavalry spotting a Union brigade coming down the road way out here on my left flank. So we're going to get in position to screen against them. But I don't expect any major combat on day one. 
for some reason Juba early went way out here even though I gave him orders to come down here so we're trying to dig in right south of town I mean I think I don't think there's gonna be any major action on day one because we're gonna hit nightfall first that'll give me a chance to redeploy So here's our defensive position. We're gonna dig in right in here, expecting that if he does come toward the town, he's gonna to come by one of these roads. So no matter where it is, we should be ready to face him. And then we're just gonna sit tight. I might even try to dig in if I can, but I've got a decent position up against the river already. I have a feeling we can probably pull these guys back. I don't think he's going to come at us from way over here. Might be better off to shift them over that way. Okay, we've spotted Burnside's brigade coming down the road. Pretty much as expected. Though I do want to shift a little bit. Don't quite like where the Hungarian impalers are. Impalers are. So we'll get them over here a little bit and then we'll bring the 10th SFGA to do the same. But otherwise, I think we're about ready for Burnside. I want to bring, these are only six pounders, but I want to bring those guns up. We got to get those upgraded. It'll be interesting to see where he deploys. If he deploys primarily over here, we can swing all of this around. I'm going to send this cavalry, the only cavalry I have right now in this army, up here to this high position. See if we can get a better glimpse of what's going on back here. Don't like not knowing what's going on. And I guess it isn't really much of a height, height and position after all. Just looks like it on the map. We may need to move a little further out to get any sense at all. I want to be able to see this road here. All right, nothing there. So now we're going to move again. We're going to move up to this high ground here. See if that's any better position. All right, now we're getting a little bit of a glimpse of the enemy. We see some cavalry coming down along with some artillery. And he's now going to deploy because he saw me there. But still, I really can't see the rest of his forces. I don't know if he's trying to get around me. If he goes and grabs this objective here, that could be a problem. And now he's going to hit me with his artillery, so we may have to go out and engage. I think we're going to have to. Let's send Jubal early out there. We'll pull the cav out over to this side. Maybe if he, if he has, in fact, sent some of his forces in that direction, we might be able to isolate part of his army. We'll bring Pickett up next. I'll move him up ever so slightly this way. Let's bring Pendleton's guns across the river. Oh, he's pulling back now. Interesting. Okay. He's pulling everybody back. Interesting. All right. I think we might be able to run up and grab this objective now. If we grab that other objective and we still hold this one, we may force him to attack us. I'd really like to be able to engage these guys, though. Rosser, just stay right there. See if we can get Early's infantry up there. All right, here he comes. So Burnside's coming this way now. All right, we're gonna take over that objective. He's gonna he's gonna be forced into a situation where he has to attack me which is what I want. I'm gonna put Zollicoffer out here. No, 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 not like that. Thank you. And then over here. Bring it on Burnside. No, not like that. Uh, he might be okay. He'll probably get there before Burnside engages.
All right, this is going to get interesting. I didn't want to fight out in the open like this, but got to do what you got to do. We got one brigade for the Confederates out in the open. We got to hit them. Going to send all of the Special Forces Division forward. And we're going to do the same here with Early. I want to hit these guys as quickly as I can. Where's the rest of his army? That's the only thing that concerns me, is I don't know where everybody else is. These are the only ones I've ever seen. He's getting orders. He's going to pull back. Hampton's just doing his own thing. He's exhausted. Right, we gotta come up and hit this battery. We're gonna pummel Burnside. The problem is we're all tired. Hit him. Hit him quick. Alright, we've got the objective. He still isn't taking the other one. are so good. But where is the rest of his army? That's the question. Looks like we might see some of it back here. Let's come up to Buffalo Lick. We took out that battery. Alright, now I need Jubal Early to reform over here. And then we're going to kind of sit tight because now he's going to have to attack us which is what I was after and keep on taking on this cavalry until he falls back there he goes Okay, that's what we want. We're taking on parts of his army without having to engage the whole thing. All right, let's bring the cav up some more. And now we sit tight. All right, he's sending another brigade in. Hungarian impalers are gonna open up on dicks. close to nightfall again. Let's move the 10th up just a hair so they can engage. We can get two brigades firing on these guys. He must have grabbed one. Yeah, he grabbed that other objective. He did. That's okay. Because now we've got part of his army to deal with. Let's move up here. Hungarian Impalers and the 10th SFGA are going to pour it into these guys. This is just a detachment of skirmishers here.
All right, there we go. Right at the end of the day, we broke a unit, but he looks like was able to reconstitute. Now, he's able to redeploy, which means he may have brought up the rest of his army. We'll find out here shortly. Or maybe not. He's still going to leave Burnside hanging out to dry. And Burnside's going to charge in with everything he's got. And he's going to get hurled back badly. And that might be enough to win this battle. I really don't know what he's thinking. And yet we still have not seen any of the rest of his army. There it is. That might be enough to win it, too. All right. I'm going to tell Johnston with the whole army of the Shenandoah to be in an aggressive position. Move the whole army forward. Let's see what happens. See if we can engage the rest of them. We drive back one more brigade, and he will be completely routed. We only lost 436 men in this battle. Of course, being aggressive like this and letting the AI take over is usually a recipe for disaster. Let's send the cavalry in to see if they can hit Burnside. He's going to fall back, though. All right, we ran into one of his batteries as he was retreating. Only 454 men lost. Eight cavalry, 446 infantry. Major victory for us it only shows as a minor victory just because of the troops involved and um, everything that happened but uh, it's a major victory in my mind because we were able to isolate one of the enemy units that was part of that 70 some thousand man force that was moving into northern virginia and so now part of that is going to retreat and so now we can face maybe 50 50 or so thousand of it and we might be able to get ourselves an advantage here but that'll be for the next episode uh, I'm starting to get enough men to be able to recruit a couple of those Virginia units. We'll get some more of them going soon. Same with Texas. Uh, by far the most recruit, uh, requested state were, states were Virginia and Texas. So it's taken me a little longer to get those units going. But uh, we, we have a long, long way to go in this campaign. Uh, it's only October 1861. Like I said, we're going to get um, some additional policies here before too long. Seven days before getting into industrialization too. Uh, then we can go for Militia Act 3, which is going to improve our recruitment quotas. Uh, and that will allow us to get a lot more men. And then we'll be able to get all of those patron units in there. By 1862, we'll have all the armies we want. And we'll be able to do what we need to. Thanks for watching. We will see you again soon in a couple of days.